Sure, anytime. Hello, my name is Dr. Tom Bannon and I'm from Kane University. Today is June 20th, 2001. Hello, today is June 20th, 2001. My name is Dr. Tom Bannett. I'm from Kane University, and I'm working with Mr. Paul Lobauer uh, of Pro Media, Digital Media Productions out of Mount Laurel, New Jersey. Today we're aboard the Battleship New Jersey, located in Camden, New Jersey, and we're talking with Mr. John Horan of Cherry Hills, New Jersey. Uh, John served as a signalman in the Navy aboard the Battleship from the time it was uh, commissioned in, on May 23rd, 1943, until December 1945 when the war ended. He was one of the plank owners of the battleship, meaning one of the original crewmen who joined the ship. John, thank you for being with us today. You're welcome. John, I want to start off the conversation by asking a question. How did you get to become involved with the battleship New Jersey so many years ago? In the beginning? Yes. Well, I, I joined the Navy in November of 42, and I went to Great Lakes Naval Training Station. And then from there, I was sent to communication school in the University of Chicago. And then when I finished there, uh, I was transferred to uh, Philadelphia Navy Yard and, uh, for, to await a ship. And at the time, the Jersey was being built. So I was assigned to the battleship in New Jersey. So it was just by happenstance that you got just, on the battleship? Yeah. <laughs> yeah a destroyer know. or whatever it was. Uh, yeah, I didn't know. where I was just knew I was going to Philadelphia Navy Yard to be assigned to a ship, but I didn't know which How one. How old were you at the time? Uh, 19. 19 years old. And you, where did you go to school, by the way? Uh, in New York. New York State. N New York City. New York City. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about your experience aboard the ship. First of all, what was it like? You were there the day it was commissioned on right. May 23rd, 1943? That's right. Tell me about that day, which well, you can recall. Well, we went on the ship earlier because uh, we had to, you know, learn our way around. Mm -hmm. So we was in, uh, in February and Mar March and April, we were put on the ship and uh, to our stations where we were supposed to be and we would practice what we were supposed to do and get to know the ship and things like that. So then when May came and then we had the commissioning, but we had already been on the ship for a couple of months. You know? And uh, What do you recall that day when it was officially commissioned? Oh, it was very, very interesting. <laughs> Uh, it was good because I was a signalman at the time, so we had a run of what they call the uh, uh, pennant, commissioning pennant, up over the top of the American flag, and you run it all the way up. And then uh, when the ship gets commissioned, then you take it down, you know, so I was in charge of doing that. So you ran the pennant up that <laughs> Yeah, That's the commissioning pennant. Yeah. Commissioning pennant. Yeah. And then, Were you nervous? You might make a mistake or <laughs> drop it. Everybody's watching that thing. Sure. No, you had the chief standing next to you watching you. Right? Tell me what you're <laughs> yeah. so, no, so everything went fine, and uh, it was a, we had a good spot to see the commissioning because we were higher up, mm -hmm. and uh, they were doing it on was the there, stern. Were there any people there the day of the commission? Yeah. Who was there? Uh, the governor. Governor uh, Edison of New Jersey. Jersey, Jersey and his wife, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the same one who had christened the ship. Mm -hmm. And there was uh, a lot of senators. Mm -hmm. Congressman, there was a lot of dignitaries. There. What was the feeling you had that day? Do you recall that? Well, I was very uh, surprised that uh, you know, to, as you say, to get on such a big ship mm -hmm. and, and never saw anything that big before, <laughs> besides a fishing boat. Mm -hmm. right? So that was very small. So I, uh, it was really a thrill and uh, enjoyed it. Tell us a little bit about first of all your experiences um, as a ship goes to sea now. It's going on its, its uh, shakedown voyage. Right. Tell us a little bit about that voyage. Where, what, what happens on a shakedown? Well, we uh, left the Philadelphia Navy Yard and then we went down the Delaware River. And uh, it was a great experience. As when we were on the way out, everybody was all along the shores, waving and waving flags. And <laughs> it got quite a reception going out, just going out of, into the sea. And then there we were headed out into the ocean and we were all young kids out from the city, <laughs> so it was a big excitement to us. We didn't realize what was going on. We were too young to realize it. And uh, it was something different that you have never done before, and uh, it was very exciting. So you went out to sea, and where'd you go from there when you got to the, out to sea? We went from there to uh, Trinidad. Mm -hmm. uh, they did shakedown crews between Philadelphia and Trinidad, and that's when they shot off the 16-inch guns and the 5-inch guns and the 20 millimeters, and they would have tow planes pulling targets so they could shoot at it, trying everything out. 
So then we ended up in Trinidad and they let us go out on uh, a leave. How long, did that, how long did it take to get to Trinidad? Uh, well, we didn't go directly because we were stopped to shoot the guns off. Uh, I would say before we got down there it was about a month. A month. A month so. Did everything work on the ship, as you recall? Was there any major that I knew? <laughs> no, we didn't have. I, they, we had all of the uh, 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 Navy Yard people on board, too. Mm -hmm. In case something went wrong, they were to fix it. So we had their uh, on there. And what happened was a funny thing that happened. They, when they came on, they brought their toolboxes, and they put them under the 16-knit mounts up here in the forward of the ship. <laughs> And when they fired the 16 inch guns, they all went over the side. Well, there go the tools. They're going to tell their landlubbers. They never had experience right. with a Navy ship. I guess they never, they never, that's the first 16 inch guns they've ever seen go off to say so was that. The first thing the gun ever did was blow somebody's tools off. That's the right. <laughs> Historical trivia right there. Yeah. What it, the crew must have gotten a good laugh out of it. <laughs> yeah, that was real. Yeah. Um, so you, you, you get to Trinidad. What happens next as the ship's getting ready to go into you know full operation? Yeah. Well, then from Trinidad, uh, we went back up again, and on our way back up again, we did. Uh, they were doing a lot of uh, anti-aircraft firing uh, at sleeves and mm -hmm. stuff. So the fellows, are, you know, these all boots, they never fired guns before, yeah. and so they they did a lot of practicing of uh, and, firing and, on. Uh, and a sleeve is something you pull behind an airplane. An airplane, right? right. Would yeah. they ever shoot the airplane down by mistake? <laughs> no, or I never saw it happen. Yeah. <laughs> and then in the water, they would toast a thing behind a, mm -hmm. a tug like. And, and they would fire the mm -hmm. guns at that to see mm -hmm. how close they could get to it. Mm -hmm. What did you do as a signalman? Was your equipment operating, I, I assume it would be yep. operating in top condition before the ship left right. Philadelphia? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had tried it all out before mm -hmm. we left. And we have uh, uh, the, uh, the lights and uh, you know the blinking lights, mm -hmm. so that's how we talked to other ships. What was your, your so your, your communication mean was by flag, lights, radio? No. No, we didn't use radio. The radio, radio men used the radio. radio. They radio. was a different group. Yeah. Right. Now ours were strictly lights and flags mm -hmm. and semaphore. Mm -hmm. So you're skilled in all three areas. Yeah. Right. Very interesting. So, uh, how, how, where'd you go? How long was your training in that? Uh, six weeks. Six weeks. Mm -hmm. Were you fast? At no, semaphore? no. It was fair. Uh, semaphore wasn't yeah. bad, but reading the light was a little tough. Mm -hmm. Because you have to know the Morse code without a second, you know, it says, da -da, it's an A. Mm -hmm. You haven't got time to know what is that? <laughs> because you missed the next three letters. Right, right. So that was a tough part learning yeah. that. The, yeah. the, Did the, they use that a lot for communication oh, when you're traveling all silently? All, all the time. All That's the time. what we used was lights. We never, they never had cell phones in those days, you know, and ra they didn't use radio. Well, we could use the radios mm -hmm. on a shakedown, mm -hmm. but when we were in the Pacific, they had radio silence. Radio so silence. we did everything with lights and flags. Mm -hmm. And what they would do with the flags is they would run the flags up in the, the latitude that you wanted the ship to turn. Mm -hmm. And they, we put our flags up and then everybody else on the ships put their flags up. And then when the, the, the captain gave us the orders to lower the flag, when we lowered our flags, then everybody else turned. Mm -hmm. They lowered theirs and all ships turned at oh, the that's same time. The turn? Yeah. Very interesting. They did it with flags. They didn't do it on a radio. What would you do in foul weather? When it's foggy, misty, nasty? Well, they, they could do it, uh, as you say, other ways with the lights with and lights things and like so that. Yeah. But uh, well, on a good day, they use the flags. But, uh, now, the trip, the, the ship leaves Trinidad. It's coming back up this way, you said? Yes. And what happens then? Tell us more about the ship. Well, uh, as I say, it was mostly uh, the gunners practicing, you know, uh, the 20 millimeters, 40 millimeters, and the 5-inch guns. That was mostly for them, really, most of the and then we got back to we went back to the Philadelphia Navy Yard again, and then they fixed up whatever was wrong, and then from there we went up to the North North Atlantic, and then they tried the guns out in the cold weather, and the same things in the cold. See, the other was hot. <laughs> now we now we went up there, so and we stayed in Casco Bay because the captain of the ship happened to live there. <laughs> oh, up in May, up in May, so we want to go visit or something. So, do you recall? Is there any any problems as the ship was going from a warm? A tropical area to the north. Was there any? You didn't run any problems. So everything no. was working fine. Fine, yeah. Very That's good, yeah. So after you complete your shakedown cruise, what happens next with the ship? And then we went back to Boston for Christmas mm -hmm. in uh, 1943, and uh, we spent uh, a couple of days in Boston. And then from there we went to Norfolk. We picked up ammunition. That's when we loaded all the ammo on. Mm -hmm. 
And then on January the 12th, 1944, we went through the Panama Canal. Mm -hmm. Now, I've heard when you go through the Panama Canal, one person said that at one end of the canal, canal, you have to unload some fuel so the ship can ride higher. You go through the canal, then reload with fuel, and it goes back deeper. Is that true? I was never familiar with that. No. You're not, okay. I, I wouldn't be into that, but I never heard sure. that story. Okay. I was yeah, just wondering no, no. about that. So you because both, they raised the ship up in the water, you know, from sure, sure. canal to down. I don't know Any what. Any experiences going through the Panama Canal that you recall? Well, it, it was nice, you mm -hmm. know, uh, but it's pretty tight, as you say. Mm -hmm. You know, they only got a foot on each side mm -hmm. clearance. And, uh, and you'd sometimes hit the side of the dock and the stones would fall down on the dock and things like that. But we got through it okay. And then when you come out on the other side, you're in a uh, freshwater lake. Mm -hmm. So then they decide to uh, wash the ship down. Mm -hmm. So everybody put shorts on and hoses and we always wash the ship. Hose and you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's cool us off that way, right? And then we went to Balboa and we stayed one night in Balboa and they gave us liberty at mm -hmm. Balboa. And then from there you go off into the Pacific. So yeah, we go, went off and we uh, met up with Admiral Spruance, his uh, fifth fleet, and uh, we went to uh, the invasion of the Marshall Islands. Mm -hmm. Which invasions, which uh, specific islands did New Jersey participate in? And well, shelling. we shelled the Marshall Islands, and that's in the Weetuck, mm -hmm. the and Namato, Weetuck. Uh, yeah, Majuro, Majuro, and. Uh, then from there we went to a Truck, which is a, a naval base for the, the Japanese had. And, uh, but they expected to have more, that the Japs would have more ships there than they did. So when we went there, uh, they just sent out a destroyer, which they, we sunk. And then, then a cruiser came out and shot at the Iowa, the, the Iowa was with us. And then the Iowa fired back on a cruiser and damaged that. And the cruiser took off back into port again. You know? But the way, uh, there wasn't as many ships as we thought that they it, thought there was going to be. You know, truck was a major Japanese resupply point. In yeah, Pacific. yeah. So they thought there would be a lot, but they must. I guess they removed their ships before we got there. You know, so, so after that minor battle, what happened next with the New Jersey? Well, then we went. Uh, we then went over to Guam and Tinian mm -hmm. for the invasion of mm -hmm. Guam and Tinian, and we went to Palau mm -hmm. and invaded that island. And uh, as they were stepping stones across the Pacific. And then we ended up in uh, uh, the Philippines, Lady Gulf, and, uh, and then we went from there to, uh, to China Sea off Hong Kong uh, for airstrikes. And then we came back to uh, Iwo Jima, then we were in an invasion of Iwo Jima, Iwo Jima, and then we were in an invasion of Okinawa. <laughs> Now you're covering a lot of territory, a lot of different fights, 15 seconds or less. Each one's very different. Uh, yeah. Uh, talk to us a little bit about the Marshall Islands. What was it like to be aboard the ship when it's engaged in combat, shelling an island mm -hmm. or in an area where a, a truck where the, uh, some ships are coming out? And tell us about that situation. Well, the Marshall Islands, uh, they're atolls and they're not the very low islands and palm trees and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And the uh, Japanese were really dug in. They built a lot of fortifications. Mm -hmm. They go underground and stuff like that. But uh, we didn't have any really response back from the island at us, you know. At that so you're, point. you're just serving as a gun platform. Yeah, we point. just yeah we we bombarded the island before the Marines went in, mm -hmm. or the I think that was an army engagement, not Marines. Before the army went in, we uh, bombarded the uh, shore area and all that kind of things. Talk to us about you know you went from the Marshalls to the next island was where you provided bombardment. Uh, the next one would have been uh, Palau. Palau, that was a Marine engagement. Yeah, that was Marines. Talk to us, Palau was quite a nasty engagement. For yeah, the it was for the Marines, yeah. Talk to us what happened there, you shelled the island and... Yeah, yeah. but there wasn't, they we didn't have much response back against us. No response, yeah, no. but the enemy was dug in. But, yeah, they were dug in Palau against us. All those islands that were dug volcanic in. volcanic islands. Right. I think the Marines went through the southern tier, the Army mm -hmm. went through the center. Yeah. The center had more of sand islands, where the southern, I think the southern tier is more coral-based islands, mm -hmm. and your shells could just barely chip away. Chip away right there, yeah, Did right. you understand when you're shelling the, some of those islands that it was having limited effect on the Japanese dug deep underground? Did, mm -hmm. did you have any? I don't. Did you have any sense or no? My, myself, personally, I didn't, and I yeah. don't know if uh, higher-ups did, mm -hmm. yeah, because I, there was spending all this time bombarding the place, sure. and if they thought it wasn't doing any good, I don't think they would have bothered with What's it. What's your yeah. duties during bombardment? Uh, we're just lookouts. Mm -hmm. uh, you become lookouts, and uh, for uh, you have to know, learn all the different planes, Japanese planes and stuff like that. 
and then you uh, they give you binoculars and they send you up above the different ends of the ship and you're supposed to you know watch for incoming planes sure. and things like that what's it like to be aboard a ship when the 16 inch guns are firing a bombardment uh, salvo yeah. after salvo yeah. after salvo you stick <laughs> cotton in your ears and get on the other side what's left of it any japanese prisoners around or is any not, not no remnants of japanese they're all gone by the they were all what gone about uh, philippine civilians did you see any of those hey around? oh yeah yeah yeah, what condition they were they in? <laughs> they were selling you soda and stuff like that. You know, making a business. Meet you at the dock, right? Back in business, yeah. <laughs> and other things they were selling. Yeah, going yes. to that. <laughs> right. Various so, sundry items. Yeah. Today, the Marine person. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but uh, yeah, but this is Liberty Place. But there wasn't, there was no really thing to do. You know? So, from the time your ship left the United States, <clears throat> went into the Pacific, uh, how long was that time period then? A year plus? A <clears throat> year and a half? From when I went out to like I when you went out, when you left Panama Canal and went out to the Pacific, how long was that? <clears throat> Till 45. Till 45. Uh, I went in 44, uh, January 44, and then I left uh, Japan in uh, 45, December so, of 45. So, so it was oh, two years. That time period, you were aboard ship almost all the time? Right. We How went back to Hawaii you, twice. Twice. And then you had some shore leave in Hawaii. Right. But most of the time you're aboard ship for almost two years. That This ship was your home then. Right. What's it like living on a ship? It's a big ship, but still it's a small... Yeah. You stayed in turf. your own compartment. You know what I mean? Like, uh, when you were on a ship, you had color badges, mm -hmm. white, blue, and then on it. It had your division in the middle. Mm -hmm. So everybody knew where everybody belonged. Now, we were always up on a bridge, so we sort of hung around the bridge. Now, I met a lot of fellows who were machinist mates, and uh, when they were on board here, uh, I took them up on a bridge, and they said, you notice the first time we've ever been on a bridge in this ship? They wouldn't let us up here with our dirty shoes, which is true. They would come out of the engine room, with, and they, would, they wouldn't let them off the main deck. <laughs> and, uh, then, and we weren't, I was never in the engine room of this ship when I was on there. I've seen more of this ship since I've been here than I did when I was on it. So you pretty much stayed to your one little area, did your job on the bridge or signaling, whatever, and then yeah. went back down the area, slept yeah, in a boat. Then went and ate, chow in a chow galley. What would, be, what would be an average day for you aboard the ship when, when it's out in the Pacific, not necessarily engaged in any shelling or combat? What would go on? Well, no, you're four hours on, four off. Mm -hmm. You had to stay on a watch for four on or four, four on, off. Four off, and that would go on for weeks at a time? Every day, 24 hours a day. So you'd go hit the rack, get maybe two or three hours sleep, get up, work? Hit the rack, back up and down. What's if you had like? the twelve to four thing, they let you sleep an extra hour. <laughs> What's that like doing that uh, week after week, month after month?
Well, at that time, it, it didn't seem strange to me, mm -hmm. but now when I come back now and I look, I, I can't believe it's slipping. Now, the bunks we have today weren't what we had. We had the bunks you push up that you with a chain. Up. Yeah. Well, thrice up with a chain. Yeah, yes. and I'm saying, sleep on these things and these little mattresses <laughs> about the stick, yeah. you know? And, uh, and it, no air conditioning. Mm -hmm. Hot. Hot in the Pacific. You would lay there and just perspire. You'd get up in the morning, you, your whole sack would be, uh, you know, wet. The pillow would be saturated. <laughs> if I can answer, when I was in Okinawa, I remember going to sleep because I would work night watch. Yeah. I'd sleep like this in a bed during the day. Get up and you would literally see the outline of your body. Right. Just it's just what perspiration out. was. <laughs> yeah. It was unbelievable. It was, it was terrible, really. But as I said, at that time, I didn't think anything of it. But now when I come back, I say, I don't know how we ever we'll did that. <laughs> Um, now, in December, uh, now you went into the the ship went to Japan ultimately, right? To Tokyo Harbor. Yeah. What was it like when you went into Tokyo Harbor? What did you see? What did you experience? Well, uh, when we got to Tokyo Harbor, there was nobody there but us, and uh, I think two cruises mm -hmm. and about four destroyers and a repair ship. Mm -hmm. Everybody else was gone. They went back to the states. The, uh, the you, Missouri and them all went to the states so you after the signing. There in December. When did you arrive? We, in Tokyo? we arrived there in. Uh, right now uh, well the treaty the thing was signed in September right it was in the end of September September you went in yeah we got there about a week after the signing uh-huh and so we stayed there then we went on we put us on occupation duty so we were on occupation duty this time October November talk to us a little bit about, about occupation well, that was, well that was better we went ashore at Yokosuka Naval Base and Yokosuka 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 Naval Base yeah okay Yakuska Naval Base, and then uh, uh, if you had been there, you know the officers' quarters I they was had there. there. I was in well, yeah. yeah. Well, they had taken that over for the enlisted men, mm -hmm. you know, and they'd sell you uh, three uh, bottles of beer for sixty-six cents. How <laughs> many bottles? Three for sixty-six cents. <laughs> wow. So, so you did some, what? Did the, tell us about the Japanese. What was your? What did you see? I find them very. I didn't find them to be hostile mm -hmm. or anything like that. You know. Because we were first one ashore, everybody's watching over their shoulder. Mm -hmm. you know? But they weren't, no. and now the sh storekeepers, if you wanted to buy, like they're great for pearls, mm -hmm. maybe you were there, you know, different kinds of nice mm -hmm. stuff they had, mm -hmm. and they just weighed on you and like mm -hmm. any, take your money. <laughs> was there, there was no resentment towards you then, as an I, I Not that I found, well, yeah. I, and I went to, I went to Yakiska, uh, and then I went to uh, Okaha, uh, Lok Yokohama. Yokohama, and yeah. I went to Tokyo. Did you run into any former Japanese soldiers who were like guys walking around with one leg or an arm missing? You, no, you could no, tell they've been I, in there. I, I was, mostly everybody was dressed civilians with that I've seen. There wasn't many army people mm -hmm. in around Tokyo or them places then. So then after the, the actual fighting ends, what you're saying then is that the Japanese just gave up totally and just went about their life. Yeah. That's did what you I see like much the way I liked it. What did you see as far as any devastation to the uh, to the cities? Uh, Yokohama was in pretty bad shape. Mm -hmm. There was a lot bombed out. And Tokyo was away from the palace, was bombed out. But around the palace was fine. We didn't touch. So we used to go to the park and walk around the palace, you know, outside the palace mm -hmm. and stuff. And that, play that was fine. They didn't mm -hmm. bomb that at all. Mm -hmm. They picked their targets in Tokyo, I guess. What about Yokosuka? Yokosuka wasn't. There was, that wasn't. I didn't see any damage to that place. So maybe they, I, I sometimes wonder if we left that untouched, we could use it yeah, right. in the future because you knew we were going to go there. Yeah. We need a place to land our capital ships in the future. Yeah, we did send a signal group there, mm -hmm. uh, uh, take turns for the cruiser. Uh, we were challenging ships coming in Tokyo Bay mm -hmm. out of their mm -hmm. tower. They had a, a signal tower there. What was the reaction uh, of the crew when they found out in August that the Japanese said that's it after the second bomb is dropped on? Nagasaki, you get what happens. <laughs> a lot of screaming, mm -hmm. and and uh, the chief came over and said, "I want got two guys sitting on the top of where all those flares are, and I don't want one of those flares missing out." <laughs> he thought everybody's got to start yeah, celebrating, right? Uh, so he he made us sit on top of the flare box. So you had nobody, to do that. Yeah, I was one of them. Uh -huh. They put the petty officers to watch mm -hmm. that, that, that that nobody. It wasn't only our own signalmen, but they were thinking that deckhands would come up and try to have a little party. Mm -hmm. So it, it was, but everybody was very, you know, everybody was happy yeah. and everything. The saddest time, I think, was when President Roosevelt died. That when everybody had April, taken a shock. April yeah. 40, yeah. That was a shock for everybody, yeah. How did people react to that board ship when, they, when President well, Roosevelt died? Very, everybody yeah. felt real bad. Yeah. You know, they figured, gee, well, he's the boss now. What, what's right. going to happen right. now, you know? Right. <laughs> 
Of course, back in those days, you didn't realize the, how things work in the sure. government, you know, but you thought, well, here's the boss man, now what's he what's gonna, gonna decide, you know? <laughs> Once you hear the war ends, did the shipboard routine change at all? Did they get more relaxed? Were they still fearful of Japanese subs or some other enemy ship might try and take you on? Some well, no, we went, well, when we went to Guam, we had two destroyers with mm -hmm. us. When we went to Guam to, to uh, uh, the Philippines, mm -hmm. We had a destroyer escort of two destroyers. They mm -hmm. still gave us escorts. Mm -hmm. And then we went to Tokyo Bay, we had two destroyer escorts Very too. Okay. So I guess they were never really sure if there was no submarines to guy had. Who got the message yet, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which could Or didn't care they got the message. They were still right. gonna take care of it. Yeah. Well, yeah. What Just like the, Jap the Japanese soldiers in the Philippines, they would never give up even. Uh, on Okinawa, uh, by the way, the, it, the yeah. Marines were running combat operations in what's called the Northern Training Area, yeah. Northern Okinawa, which yeah, was where thick the mountain was? jungle until 1949. Yeah. It wasn't secure, and of course we had Japanese soldiers in the Pacific right up to the 1960s yeah. on these little isolated islands, you heard, but they didn't give up. Now, well, what we, they, were, they were jumping off the mountain, the people, they were all committing suicide. Yes. Yeah. Did anybody would, do that in Japan that you heard of, or no? No, I never saw it in Japan, but Okinawa was tough. The body, children, everything. And because of the tide would take them, and all these bodies would move past the ship. You actually you know? saw that? Yeah, because we anchored real close to the shore mm -hmm. then. By that time, we had sort of secured the island mm -hmm. as far as bomb, you know, firing back at Bombardment, heavy resistance. And we were there, and uh, <laughs> we could see the people, you know, jump. There were women, men, women with the children in their jumping arms, jumping the off this thing, you know, and then they hit the water and drowned, and then all the bodies would move with the cars. Was that in Naha? That Naha's a, the main city, the main harbor in Okinawa, yeah. might have been All Naha. I know, it's a very high cliff where they were cliff. jumping off yeah. at the end of an island. I, I didn't really know the names of it. I was never, sure. uh, I never got ashore in Okinawa myself. We never went ashore. What happens now, you said you, uh, you finished your tour of the Navy in Japan? Yeah, for, in 1945, I had enough points with your age and your time in there, I had enough of points to get out. And explain the point system to us in World War II. Uh, if I can remember, it was, it was by how long you were in, what your age was, and how much combat duty you had. And it adds up to 21. Mm -hmm. it, they give you points for each mm -hmm. thing, and if it adds to 21, you got out. So I, I, uh, I got to 21, mm -hmm. which was pretty good because I was on with fellows there who somehow were uh, Got on the same time I did, and they didn't have enough points. Mm -hmm. So maybe it was my, maybe I was older than they were by a year or so, or something like that. Because I got out, there was about seven of us signalmen that went back on an APA mm -hmm. ship back mm -hmm. to uh, Bremington. Mm -hmm. So I don't. Know. What was your feeling as you're getting off to New Jersey or leaving it? You thought maybe was, forever. Yeah, well. Well, you know, you were going home, so you were sort of happy mm -hmm. about stuff like that. But I, when I got on the APA, I went up to the bridge, and I asked the guy, could I use those? So I was talking on the light. We were oh, talking really? back and forth with the guys. We just, back and so, yeah, forth. We, yeah, we stayed there for two days, so I used to go every day. Well, what happened to me, I had, couldn't get everything in my sea bag. Mm -hmm. And I got a, this box, and I packed a lot of mm -hmm. stuff, stuff I bought in Japan mm -hmm. and stuff, and I packed them all in mm -hmm. this box to ship mm -hmm. home. But when I went to the post office, the fellow didn't have any more stickers for your address. Mm -hmm. So I said, I don't have any more right now when I get them. So I said to one of the fellows that I used to pal around with, I said, I'll leave this box here, but when you go and get a sticker in a few days, because it was not, it didn't cost anything yeah. to ship it, and, and put it on there. Mm -hmm. I never received it. And I, and stuff. Did and you ever keep that was the pennant? That? The pennant was in there that I had. Really? On the ship. That you use for yeah, because the pennant, when we took a pennant down, we threw it in the drawer, and it was in there for about two years. <laughs> and one day I saw it in there, I said, well, nobody wants it. So yeah. I put it in my locker, sure. and I figured I'll take it home as a silver there, but it was in that box. And you don't know what happened to the box? No, and then I talked to the guy who was supposed to do it, and he says, I don't remember a box. <laughs> he was from Kentucky, so, but I met him at reunions after yeah. that. And his wife, every time we see him, here comes Haran, he's going to get you for not sending you. his box. If you ever see a pennant fall out of his pocket, uh, yeah. what do you do with that? That's for sure. Yeah, that's what it is. I don't know if somebody decided to open it and see yeah. what was in there, because there was a lot of gifts I had bought, you know. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I bought uh, pearls from my mother, and I, but I took them home with me. I didn't put them in there, I, you know. What was the reception you had when you got home? Oh, everybody was really glad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I went, uh, well, I went home in a troop train through Canada. We went to Bremerton and they put us on troop trains, Canadian troop trains, mm -hmm. and they, we went home by way of Canada and then down New York into uh, Grand Central Station. <laughs> so how long did the trip from Japan to New York take? Uh, a couple of weeks? Oh, at least, yeah. yeah. 
I think the trip on the ship, the APA, I, I think that was almost a week. Yeah. They break uh, up they were slow moving ships. Yeah, they were 11, eight, bad, 11, 12 yeah. knots or something like that. But they, they were packed. We were packed on that. Oh, phew. Chow line, you can, right, you take you two hours just to get a chow line and eat. What was happening aboard an APA like this, where it's loaded with, you know, Navy, Army, Marine mm -hmm. personnel going home? Uh, was there still discipline aboard the ship? Were people lax days ago? No, were they happy, they, easy They didn't going? make you do anything, yeah. anything like that. Uh, I actually volunteered for uh, KP duty. Mm -hmm. I went up to uh, the feller and uh, chief, and I said, you know, can I help you out here mm -hmm. do KP or something mm -hmm. like that? And he said, if you want. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, I went back and uh, got my stuff and I came back there. So I used to peel potatoes and carrots. Mm -hmm. And then you take the eyes out of them. Mm -hmm. out of, you know, you didn't peel them. You put them in a machine mm -hmm. and they come down. But every morning I get up, I had breakfast with the cooks. Uh, you had the best breakfast. Lunch, I had lunch with the cooks. Mm -hmm. And dinner, I had dinner with the cooks. Mm -hmm. And then I had access to get down into the uh, room where all the juices were kept mm -hmm. and the oranges and the apples. <laughs> so I used to get down there and I'd take a two or three cans of it. So we went to the movies on a fantail at night. I'm handing out stuff. I said, where'd you get this from? <laughs> Just drink it. Don't Just ask questions. You know? <laughs> so there was a little bit of planning behind your volunteer. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, so. uh, let's skip forward a little bit. Let's look back on your years, uh, sir, your several years serving aboard the USS New Jersey. Uh, How has that impacted your life? Well, I, say, I have to say that I grew up you know what I mean? But I went in at 19, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, going to beat the world and stuff, but mm -hmm. you learn better. Mm -hmm. And I think it helped me grow up and I was a different person, you know, and I, when I came back, I was ready. What did to, you do when you came back? You got discharged and... Uh, I, I got discharged and I went to work for the Internal Revenue. Mm -hmm. And I worked for the Internal Revenue uh, one year. Mm -hmm. They hired veterans for the uh, rush season, like from April mm -hmm. to July or mm -hmm. something like that. So I worked there and uh, after my time was up uh, they said well veterans you have a preference you want to stay on but I really didn't like working in the internal mm -hmm. revenue and stuff like that it seems like all the people who were working there who were there during the war years think you there to get that job mm -hmm. so they weren't very helpful to you, you know? <laughs> tough to get along with how about today when people come aboard the ship starting September 1st of 2001 um, what do you think people should walk away from the ship with after they've been aboard it Oh, well, I had an experience with it, but I'm oh, sorry, we hit that thing again. Uh, experience uh, when we was over in Beckett Terminal for two days and they had the ship open <coughs> and the people could go up on the main deck and then mm -hmm. off. So I was there that day and I was standing at the end of the gangway and we were giving out mm -hmm. things and then I was signing people up for to do this uh, work, uh, you know, volunteers on the ship and uh, everybody that came down was really really pleased to be able to go on it. And they all they saw was the main deck, you know? And it wasn't in very good shape when they saw it, like it is. It's getting better now, anyway. But uh, they got a, I don't know, everybody wants to see it. I mean, everybody you meet, they want you to come over, want to come over and take them on the tour. You know? I must have been, I must have taken 35 tours of people on this ship already. Already, they just want to get <laughs> I had the Marines here when you mm -hmm. did the Marines. Yes. I had four of them and their wives, and I took them. They wanted to see the Marine compartment mm -hmm. down below and everything, you know. I've been told in New Jersey it's called a lucky ship. Yeah. Did you ever hear of that? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why is well, it? because every, it never got hit, mm -hmm. nobody ever got killed on it, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. You know? so only, it did in Korea, but in World War II, nobody right. was didn't killed. didn't get any hits. Yeah. And then I saw, so I heard stories from people who were on the, uh, uh, the Jersey during the Korean War, and they said that the kid who got killed shouldn't have been where he was. He was in a 40 millimeter mount mm -hmm. behind it, mm -hmm. watching them bombard the shore, uh -huh. and then the shore batteries opened up, sure. and one of the shells ricocheted off the deck and went across where he was and hit him, you know? Yeah. But he said he shouldn't, he, because Should during general quarters, you're not supposed to be in those things, you're supposed to be right. inside, you know? Inside. So he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. But that's the only one I ever sure. known I got. We had one fellow lose his leg, though. Uh, we were in uh, Ulithis, we were in an uh, anchorage, and uh, the destroyers were having target practice off, that per and one of the sh Dutch shells didn't go off, but it came down and it went right through the rear deck of the ship here. Yeah. And he was down in the jaw, he was down in the head, down below, and it hit him on the leg and took his leg off. What a way to lose your leg! Yeah. yeah. And the funny part, he was the he was a ship comedian. He's the fellow who would get up and tell jokes and yeah. dance. Yeah. 
uh, before the movies, you know, of all fellas to happen. We always would have said, this guy got a career ahead of him, There's you know? some irony there. And then all of a sudden that happened to him, yeah. yeah. Any final thoughts you have that maybe I haven't asked about or we haven't touched on? Anything you think that's important you want to tell us mm -hmm. as we wrap up? Yeah. Well, uh, I think it would be great as a museum and the people are really going to enjoy it. And I hope they all, I think they will all come out because I talk to people now and people can't wait to get on here, mm -hmm. you know. And this will only be from the main deck up to the superstructure, but when they get a museum built and they get all the uh, things, you know, in there and everything, it'll be really interesting. Enjoy it. Well, John, thank you very much. We've been You're talking welcome. today with Mr. John Horan, uh, who served aboard the battleship New Jersey from when it was commissioned on May 23rd, 1943 until December 1945. He is one of the original plank owners of the ship. <laughs> Thank you, John, very, very much. You're welcome, Mike. Thanks. Thank you, John. And okay, it didn't thanks. Fall off again. Now we, now we found